Hi guys, Allison here. Happy Fuse Glass Friday. This week's video, I'm celebrating the milestone of reaching 1,000 YouTube subscribers. I am so grateful to all of you who like my channel, who subscribed, who comment on my videos, who share my videos. I really appreciate it. Um, this is truly beyond my expectations when I started this video. Uh, I I made a video when I hit 500 subscribers and I can't believe I'm already at a thousand. It's it's truly unexpected. So in order to show how thankful I am for all of you, I decided that this week's project would be a giveaway. So because I'm so thankful and we're going into Thanksgiving season, the project that I decided to make this week is this cute little Thanksgiving feast see if it's in view. So I will be giving this away to uh, one of my subscribers. I just ask that you comment down below with either something that you're thankful for or what your favorite Thanksgiving food is and then the rest of the rules for the contest will be in the description box below this video. So the giveaway will include this four by five Thanksgiving feast project as well as this little miniature easel so that you can display it. I really hope you guys enjoy this video watching me make this project and I will see you next week. Bye! Alright, so I have my little sketch here drawn up of the Thanksgiving feast. Uh, some turkey in the middle, of course, that's the uh, main event for Thanksgiving typically. Some dessert, I did a couple pies. Um, cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes, this one's going to be stuffing, green bean casserole, which is my favorite, and a little gravy boat as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be making all of the uh, serving platters, plates, crockery, whatever you want to call it, out of uh, thin white, just because to get a lot of the details, I think I'm going to be having to do quite a bit of layering. So I don't want to use a regular thickness of glass um, and then have it just get too, too thick with my design here. So we're going to go with the thin white. Um, I've been asked before what I do with this scrap glass that I collect. I started a new one today because the other one is pretty full, kind of overflowing, so I've put this one off to the side. Maybe I will make a video if I can uh, think of a cool project to make out of all that scrap. Okay, so we have turkey plate. Get started on the turkey now. I apologize if the lighting is a little bit uh, inconsistent today. I, it seems that uh, the weather outside is not cooperating very well for uh, filming a YouTube channel. 
we're filming a YouTube video, so it's pretty cloudy, and then it's sunny, and then it's cloudy, so the lighting's kind of all over the place. Um, hopefully my camera is adjusting for it a little bit, but I think those settings can only do so much when it's uh, this inconsistent, so I apologize for that. Neat. So I have my little turkey down. I'm going to add some little uh, drumstick legs there. I don't want to use white, of course, because I've already used white for the plate, so you won't really be able to see that. Maybe I will make those out of like an off-white. Let's see how this that should work. Looking really cute to me. Let's move on to the let's do the gravy boat. So again, this is like the bird's eye view, so that's why it's just either circles or in case of the gravy boats, it's weird, you know. <laughs> I don't even know what to call that shape, oblong sort of. Because it's as if you know you were above the table looking down. So for the gravy part, I'm going to use this great, it's like a clear and dark brown swirled glass. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of that to make it look like gravy swimming around in there. I like the darker piece better. So what I'm going to do with all these different elements is I'm get the, going to get them built separately glued together separately and then I'll be able to sort of move them around to get the composition that I like because um, I don't I don't know that I'm gonna stick with my original sketch there but we'll see maybe I will I should give this a little handle. Hmm. We'll see. Let's move on. We can always come back to that. Let me get some of these little bits out of the way. I do try to keep my work surface, you know, as neat as possible as I'm working. Um, sometimes it goes better than other times, but it is a lot easier to, you know, cut pieces and um, work. You don't have a surface that's covered in little glass shards. So let's see. Let's make these little serving bowls, dishes. So the pies have to be round. I think I'm going to do the green bean casserole sort of like a little oval. And then maybe I'll do the... Cranberry sauce also is an oval. So this is the pumpkin pie. I'm actually going to cut this one out of this. Ooh, 
vanilla color because that will read as the crust because I don't think you would see the plate underneath. Let's see how that looks. going to use this tool, just the little corner of it, to sort of give it a textured edge so that it looks a little bit like that uh, pie crust texture. Um, scalloped maybe, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. That looks pretty good. And then we have the perfect pumpkin pie color here. Love that, I think that's perfect. <laughs> if you can hear any sort of funny noises, it's because I have one of my dogs standing right outside the door. I'm gonna take a picture of him with my phone just to show you what I'm dealing with and I'll insert it right here. But he's being a little bit distracting today. <laughs> okay, so what do we have? Okay, so this was gonna be that like cherry pie. Although now I'm thinking if I made the pumpkin pie with the crust like this, maybe I should also do this pie with the crust. So then this plate can become the cranberry sauce. So I know cranberry sauce can be pretty divisive. Uh, typically, I like the kind that comes in a can and is still shaped like the can when you serve it. <laughs> but I figured, you know, artistically, that might not be the cutest look. So I was gonna go with a more homemade look for this one. So I have my little uh, cranberry sauce, and then to give this a little bit more dimension, oh, let me turn this out a little bit more. So to give this a little bit of dimension, I'm just going to use some thin clear glass that I'm going to attempt to cut little teeny tiny rounds to look like the cranberries, just for that texture. Uh, thin glass is a lot easier to cut, in my opinion, when you're working this tiny. Well, in general, but especially when you're working so tiny. I wish that you could get every color and thin, but I don't think they make every color. All right, so we have some little teeny tiny bits. Just gonna do a little bit of refining here. I could have probably used Frit for this, um, but I did really want them to look, you know, like those round actual cranberries. So I think this is worth, oops. I do think that this is going to be worth the uh, 
additional work of making these little circles. Cute, you think? I think in hindsight maybe I should have, oh, I won't say that. Let's see how it turns out first before I talk about what I should have done or could have done. <laughs> okay, let's do maybe this other pie now. For this one, I'm going to make it, you know, like a, a lattice pie. Um, trying to think how I want to approach that. I think what I'm going to do is make the lattice out of stringer first and then fill it with frit. Nope, you know what? I'm going to use, I'm going to use thin clear. So I'm going to make the lattice out of the thin clear get that glue down, and then once that's dry, I'll fill in the negative space around the lattice with some frit to look like the filling. That way, the lattice work will still be this color, um, and then the crust around will still be that color. So let's see how that goes. Okay, that was pretty challenging. <laughs> I think that's gonna be good. I think that'll give the effect and then once I put the frit on, we will have a nice little pie there. So I'm gonna call that good. So next we have, let's do the green bean casserole.
Okay, so um, I had my battery for my camera just died, so unfortunately I don't have the footage of me making this lovely little oval serving platter for the green bean casserole, so I apologize for that, but uh, we do have our little oval here out of the thin white again. And then for the uh, green bean casserole sauce, I suppose, we're gonna use this sort of multicolored brown and tan piece to sort of look like that uh, cream of mushroom soup. Green bean casserole is my absolute favorite Thanksgiving dish and I can't wait to make it this year. Okay. And then for the green beans, I think I'm going to use stringer. Let's see if that looks right to me. Yeah, this will be good. So this is the dark green, and I'm just going to use this tool to cut up a bunch of little tiny pieces. try to make these look random. Random is hard <laughs> for some reason. I feel like the human brain always wants to, you know, make patterns and um, make sense out of things. So I, I find random to be hard sometimes, but that's what we're going for here. So these are the green beans and then I'm going to add um, a couple of extra little bits to make Make it look like some of the onions and maybe some little mushroom bits in there too. These little uh, shards from cutting this color for the base. I think these are going to make really good oniony looking pieces. Maybe that one's too big. Just because they have like the stripes in them already. I'm just <laughs> literally going in my scrap bin with some tweezers and picking out the tiniest little scraps. I think that looks good. <laughs> I always think I'm done and then I say, oh, well, I could add just, you know, a little bit more. I could make it a little bit more detailed. <laughs> okay. okay, we're done. That looks super cute, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Okay, moving on, we have, this was, uh, ba -ba -ba, stuffing. So let's make another round white serving dish. I'm 
So for the stuffing, I'm going to see how small I can make, you know, like if I can actually make little cubes to make it look like cubed bread. This is giving me flashbacks to my, uh, the corn project that I made with all those little teeny tiny kernels. <laughs> Luckily we don't have to do so many for this project. This is quite the look that we're going for, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to use some to use some frit, I think. Hmm. Stuffing, stuffing, stuffing. Okay, so for the stuffing, I think I'm gonna use that color that I was initially intending to use. I don't have frit in this color, this is vanilla. Um, so I'm gonna just sort of make my own for it <laughs> because I don't I don't want to use round frit balls. I don't want to use squares. So we're gonna make our own random frit shapes. I think what I don't like about this, I think I need a, a background first, so. I'm also going to add a little bit of other colored frit in here just to give it some more dimension. This is like a translucent brown. What is this? Bronze. spritz with a hairspray so that'll help stick what's already down there but then it'll also help stick these pieces that I'm adding now we'll give them a little bit to hold on to and then I also have the same size for it and a slightly darker brown called walnut so I'm gonna add a little bit of this too come together some of this uh, confetti glass in green to just sort of look like you know the herbs and spices that you find in stuffing just looking for really tiny green pieces
<laughs> we have our little stuffing. Um, I'm gonna go back to this pie. So I think I'm gonna take off those clear pieces and do what I had initially thought I was going to do, which is use clear stringer. I just, I don't love the way that this is look, this looks after I've been, you know, looking at it for a few minutes. So I'm just gonna take that off, try again. No problem there. Clear stringer. even easier on myself. Okay, let's do the fret first. Wipe off that glue. All right, I think I was making this pie more complicated than it needed to be. So let's just go in with the uh, red fret first. This is a translucent red. some hairspray to keep this in place and then I'll go back and clean up the edge a little bit more for a little crust edge. And then I'm going to go in with a an opaque stringer to do the lattice work. So like I said, I don't I don't know why I was making this so much more complicated than it had to be. I think this is this is probably where I should have been going in the first place, but you know, you live and you learn. Okay. Gonna wait for that hairspray to dry a little bit. Okay, let's leave that pie here for now. And then we can move on to the mashed potatoes. So that should be easy. colored background and then I'm going to add some more texture on top to try to look like potatoes. Lumpy mashed potatoes. confetti again and see if I can find some yellow in here. Yellow. To use for some melting butter. Okay. We should go 
back to the pie now to try to add the uh, lattice work detail. So the way that I'm constructing this pie here with these stringers, there is a chance that these stringers are going to sort of roll, either roll away from where I put them or jump off this pie completely and land somewhere else on my project. Uh, unfortunately, that's just not really something that can be controlled once it's in the kiln. So we're gonna just, you know, put them where I want them and hope for the best. <laughs> I think that's definitely something that uh, people who make fused glass and I'm sure potters also have instances where, you know, you put it in the kiln and cross your fingers, but sometimes things don't go to plan. But that looks a lot better to me than how I had it before, so I'll call that a win either way. Alrighty, um, yeah, I'm just going to give that guy a little handle here. If it was the top view, I suppose it would just be not much of a shape at all. Like that. Um, and then I want to add a little bit of detailing around the turkey. Sort of make it look like, you know, whatever decorative uh, foliage is the word that's coming to my mind, but I know that's wrong. <laughs> whatever decorative vegetables, oh my goodness. <laughs> You know, like herbs, vegetables that people put. Do some of this confetti and then maybe I'll throw some stringers on there too. have all the elements sort of laid out. Um, the pumpkin pie is looking a little bit boring compared to the other things. So let me see if I can um, maybe like a whipped cream dollop in the middle. Ooh, you know what? Let's do a bent stringer sort of little like swirl whipped cream on top. Let's do that. Get my candle here.
All right, so I think I'm done here. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think it's really cute. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me create this. Um, of course, as always, I will come back tomorrow with a with a fired project and show you how it all turned out. So I will see you then. Bye. Oh, you know what? Let me just give one last zoom in so you can see all those details. All right, until tomorrow, bye. Hi guys, we're back the next day with the final fused project, this little Thanksgiving feast here. I don't think I could be any happier with how this turned out. I absolutely love it, I think it's so cute. The pie that gave me so much grief yesterday turned out really nice. I basically love everything about this project. I had a lot of fun making it. Um, so maybe there will be more little Thanksgiving projects in my future. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Uh, if you did, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I put out a new video every Friday, and I will see you next week. Bye!